what's up guys i'm back with another video i'm here to answer another question that somebody sent me on instagram one of my childhood friends someone i kind of grew up with back, way back in brooklyn around we found each other on facebook years ago um she asked me a question to do in this video and i'm going to wait till the strip by because oh my god Okay, <laughs> bye Mr. Truck. Anyway, the question she wanted me to answer is, how did I begin to heal after my abuse started? I mean, not started. After I was out of that situation, I guess. How did I begin to heal? I'm not sure if I've answered this before. I probably have in like a couple old videos from like two, three years ago or whatnot. Um, how did I begin? Well, Unfortunately, it didn't come right away because when everything went down, y'all know my story. When I first told my mother about what my father was doing to me, we went to the cops. You know, she took me to the cops and we put in the information, as much information as we can give them. And it was as if everything was going to be fine. Like, you know, it was going to take some time, but okay, they were looking into it. They had investigators looking into it, blah, blah. So months passed, everything going through. I'm going to college, miserable, you know, still sad, failing out, still having to come home, dealing with this crap. So, um, I don't even remember how much time it was between when my mother told me to actually backtrack and lie about the situation. I don't remember the duration of time. It was probably a couple of months. I'm just gonna be honest and just assume it was a couple of months because I think that's what it was. Y'all know police work usually takes a long time. They don't be on their shit. They be bouncing and saying, oh, gotta do this, gotta do that. <sighs> they ain't consistent. They're just, the system's wicked. Just to say that. Anyway, so when my mother told me a lie, I lost complete control. I lost whatever control I thought I had regarding the situation. And that is what broke me, y'all. <sighs> that situation broke me. Okay, I'm gonna sit down for a minute right here if I can, maybe. Y'all, that situation broke me. It broke me because I felt like I was never gonna heal at that point. I literally felt like that because I had nobody else. Y'all, if you watch all my old stories, I mean my old uh, videos, all the steps I went through and all this happened, I had no one. It was just me, my parents, and my sister, my younger sister, and we lived here in like around Lovejoy, Georgia, around that area, and again, I didn't know anyone. I told y'all I had a lonely life, pretty much, very sheltered, I was not going anywhere, I didn't have any friends, you know, I didn't grad get to graduate from my high school, I went through all kind of crap with that. Uh oh, more trucks. I went through all kind of crap, um, not being able to have a life. So, regarding trying to heal, I couldn't. There was no way I could heal because when we dropped the charges, basically my mother told me a lot of the charges were all dropped. They were completely dropped. And I had to go about life like normal. My mother called herself saying, God will fix it. God will bring us back together regardless of what, what's going on. God will fix it. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. You know, we'll be all right. <laughs> And the truth is, we weren't all right. At least I wasn't. I sure as hell wasn't. Oh, wow. It's pretty over here. I sure as hell was not okay, y'all. I really wasn't. Um, Like I said, around that time, I had no way of healing. The only thing I could keep doing... Bleh, the only thing I could do was keep doing what I had been doing. Um, Writing. I was writing my erotica. Stuff like that. I can't say that was healing, but whatever, it was a hobby, you know, something I love to do. I would draw, I just kept drawing. I kept going to school, kept going to um, college, even though I was failing out. I just kept trying to be positive, because, you know, as a Pisces, ooh, I'm just a positive person, regardless. I try to be as positive as I possibly can until my buttons are pushed. And at that time, my buttons were pushed, but 
for the sake of God and my family, I tried to piece myself back together. I tried to just ignore the fact that I was still in the house with my father. And he was still terrorizing me. He only wasn't molesting me anymore, but he was still doing other things. He was still hitting me and, you know, terrorizing everybody. Being a narcissist, basically. He was still doing that. So I couldn't heal. There was no way I could possibly heal at that time. Fast forward to, like I said, me going to college. I was in college. And I met my husband. You all remember that whole story. If you don't, you should go back and watch my, my playlist. My sexual abuse playlist. For more info. Um, I met my husband in... 2005, I believe. April 2005, we met at art college. And it was the most wonderful experience of my life. Only when I met him did I start to heal. Y'all hear that? I'm serious. I'm not saying you should go look for a man to help you heal and he'll be answering answer all your problems. No, that's not what I'm saying. But realistically, only when I met him was when I started to heal. Because, as I mentioned in a previous video about unconditional love, he was the only one to show me unconditional love. Oh wow, the house over here. Interesting. He was the only one to show me that. And that's when I started to heal. Because for once, I actually had somebody to care. I actually. Not only was I not really allowed to date before, yeah, I had other somewhat boyfriends, oh well. They weren't actually, you know, they weren't serious, they didn't get serious. So when I met my husband, and we started getting serious, he was really helping me heal in ways that I never thought possible. So, you know, we were best friends at first, and even that was wonderful because I didn't know what I, even having a best friend was. He was the only one around who, like I said, loved me unconditionally. Oh, oh well. Never been over here. Oh, snap. There's a whole ass lake over here. Nice. Anyway, like I said, I could not even fathom on how to heal until I met him because he started pouring love into me. You know, I, I was horrible to him at the start. I was doing all kind of crazy stuff. Um, you know, trying to be my same nice person that, that I am, but I had issues, you know? I used to hit him for no reason. I used to like kind of beat up on him for no reason. You know, these are some of the things I used to do back then because I was so damn hurt. But, again, he loved me unconditionally. He kept loving me, he kept healing me. I told him about my situation like very early on in our relationship because I knew, I knew from the moment we met that me and him were going to be together. I just knew that. He was kind of skeptical, but I just knew that already anyway. So that's what I did. Wow. Hmm, huh, really pretty. Look at that, I've never been over here, y'all. Interesting. Ooh. So yeah. Um and besides that, besides just me meeting him, I had to keep accepting the fact that the abuse was not my fault. And again, he was the one to get me to realize that because my parents were not helping. They were not helping in any damn fashion because, again, my mom was the one who told me to lie about it. I'm not sure if my father had any part in that or not. I'm not sure. I doubt it because they weren't really um, talking at the time. I don't know. But either way, she told me to lie. And um, like I said, that broke me. That was like the ultimate betrayal. So, like I said, I had to accept that it wasn't my fault. I had to look back at everything that happened, all the incidences, all those years of crying, all those years of stuff happening, and me wondering why wasn't she getting up out of bed. I had to, I had to think about all of that repeatedly, over and over and over and over, rehashing it to my husband and just trying to make sense of it all. You know, 
when you go through sexual abuse like that, it's hard to make sense of it all. It's like you can't. Hmm, it's a nice place to hang out. It's almost like you can't make sense of it all. Because the shit don't make no damn sense. Like, why? Like, why is this happening to me? You know? So, I went through a lot of acceptance. I had to go through a lot of self-acceptance. And then after we dated for three years, we went through chaos. You know, my parents acting like assholes. In some ways, his mom doing the same. Um, not really helping certain situations. Everybody telling us, y'all need to be together. Y'all need to get married, blah, blah, blah. We had to get married because I was being abused and I had no other way out. I've had many people tell me I shouldn't have gotten married. No, yeah, no shit. I wasn't ready, honest, to be honest. I'm gonna just say, I wasn't totally ready, but what do you expect me to do? You know, I had to get out of that household at some point. You would too if you were in that situation. Dealing with a narcissistic parent who won't even let you talk on your cell phone past 10 o'clock at night and you're a grown ass adult. I mean, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> so yeah, I had to get out of there. And I did, I got married. And even after marriage, y'all, that even that wasn't easy. I had to go through a lot of self-acceptance. And the only way I was able to do that was because my husband allowed me to stay home. He allowed me, because we talked about all this before we got married. We talked about what we wanted. We talked about the fact that I wanted to be a stay-home mom. I wanted to homeschool my kids. Because after everything I'd been through, I didn't trust a damn soul with my kids when I had them. So, we talked about all that. That's precisely what we did. Now, yeah, there were a lot of things that got in our way. There were a lot of circumstances. And people who prevented us from seizing certain opportunities that we could have had to, e to, e to be even further along than we are right now. There were a lot of things that held us up. <sighs> but, again, through all of that, I had to define a lot of self-acceptance. What helped me with that is, like I said, me staying home. Staying home really saved my life, <laughs> I'm going to say, because I was hella suicidal in the beginning. It saved my life. Me being a stay-at-home mom, y'all don't understand. Y'all think, oh, well, you just being lazy. You, you just want to stay home with your kids. You never want to work. What's wrong with you? Look, you don't know my situation or, or my values, okay? I value education. I value my kids. I value being a mother. So that's exactly what I did. That's what I value. Focus on what you value. Figure that out. So that's what I did. Um, and yeah, like I said, it took a lot. It took a lot out of me self-acceptance staying home being able to calm myself being able to find myself within nature again um being able to teach my kids being able to bond with my kids all of that helped being married to a wonderful man who never did me any harm he never i mean everybody has their own issues but he never purposely caused me any harm you know he's not a narcissist i didn't have any of those issues he does things that other black men have yet to even do that. I hear women complain about their men not doing. So I'm just lucky. <laughs> I was gonna brag. Um, I know I'm lucky in that instance. So yeah, that is what helped me heal, y'all. He helped me heal. Like I said, being home helped me heal. Um, homeschooling, in a lot of ways it was bad because I didn't have any females around to help me. But surprisingly, I got pretty far even without having females. I got pretty damn far, y'all. I got pretty far in my own self-acceptance and accepting. I had to accept a lot of things about myself. I had to find my own self-love. I had to realize that I was beautiful, despite growing up being called ugly by all the bullies that used to pick on me. I had to realize that I was actually smart and I wasn't dumb just because I started failing out of school because that shit wasn't my fault. I had to realize that I had intelligence. I had to realize that yes, I am smart and I am somebody and I can be happy and that's generally what it is you have to accept that you can be happy you have to find your happiness wherever it lies you know like I said I'm grateful that I got to stay home I'm grateful <laughs> that I've got to stay home all this time uh, yeah there are plenty of times where I know I, I wanted to go out to work I didn't exactly mind but again I treasure my kids more 
I treasure my kids. I treasure motherhood. I treasure not being able to, or not having to send my kids off to some public school for some teacher to teach them some stranger and then them getting mixed up in a bunch of peer pressure and having them, you know, full of all kinds of spirits and all kinds of crap that they shouldn't be going through. That's what I treasure. I treasure being home for that and that's what healed me. Being a mother healed me, all of that, you know, it's a lot. And that's how I started my healing. That's literally what it was. It wasn't no magic pill. I didn't go to no damn church. Um, I didn't go to no psychiatrist. I didn't take any pills, I, nothing. I mean, I have not been anywhere, but just at home healing with my man and my kids. I have not been anywhere. I mean, y'all know my life. My life is boring to most. And hey, that's what it is, you know? It is what it is. So yeah, that's how I began my healing process. And there's a whole lot of shit that came along after that. But that's just the basis of it. The basis of it is just being loved by a great man, staying home, um, having kids, being able to raise my kids the way I wanted to, knowing that they're safe, getting out in nature, exercising, playing music, making music, making videos that helped as well. All of that, you know, and it wasn't easy. It definitely was not easy. It took me some years. My husband and I had, had some super fierce fights in the beginning about certain things that I wouldn't accept certain things that we just it was a hurdle to get through it wasn't easy like for real it was not an easy process but we got through it and we're still getting through it and i'm proud you know i'm very 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 proud of where i've come man i hope ain't no bugs crawling on me i love nature but these bugs yo these bugs stay away please So yeah, um, I hope I answered that question pretty well. I don't know. There's a whole lot that goes along with that. But like I said, I already said the basics. Hopefully we can get something out of that. Um, and continue to live your life. I hope you find some happiness. Because everybody deserves it. Especially after going through abuse. Especially after going through abuse as a child. And a lot of things you had to keep a secret from certain people. Even people that you care about. There's... It takes years to heal, like years, and that's just what it is, you know? There are other ways you can heal yourself, even if you can't afford a psychiatrist, if you can't do any of that. There are ways you can heal at home, surrounded by people who care about you. The ones who genu genuinely care about you, you know? I don't mean the ones who fake. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's pretty much it, y'all. This day is like absolutely gorgeous. I just can't get over it, and I've never been to this area, so. I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. So yeah. I'm also enjoying this new phone. I got a new phone recently. <laughs> so yeah. I'm chilling. Get my exercise in, y'all. <sighs> so I'm going to head out now. I'm gonna get on this ground because I'm sure my pants are wet and my jacket is wet or something. It's freaking wet by now. Yeah. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. I hope you can take something from it. And all that jazz. So yeah. I hope you guys are having a great day, second hour, month, minute, and decade. Thank you for watching. Peace out.